Now is our time for a brief meditation, so I invite you to get comfortable in your chair. And if it feels okay to you to close your eyes, we'll take a couple of deep breaths together, breathing in and breathing out. Letting those shoulders relax as we just know that in this moment there is no place that we have to be. There's nothing that we have to do. We can just be present to the quieting of our minds for a few moments. We can just be still and be present in this moment. This morning, I invite you to travel with me in your imagination. I would like for you to envision that you are walking through a meadow. You're on the way to a riverbank. Someone has told you about this magnificent, peaceful spot where you can just go to be still and be in nature for a bit. So we're walking through the meadow and soon we begin to hear the water trickling in the river. You take out your blanket and you put it on the ground and you sit down on the side of this riverbank and just listen to the water. Feel the sun on your face. The air is crisp and cool. There's a wind that's blowing through the trees that sounds like an orchestra. It's so beautiful here. And when we look down by the riverbank, we see there's a little boat, a little like canoe type boat tied up on the side of the riverbank. And so we go down to it to explore a bit. And we get an intuition that we are here because we are supposed to let go of the burdens that are holding us back, that are holding us down. And so we use the power of our imagination as you're thinking about those things, those things that make you feel tired, that make you feel weary, those things that you worry about and fret about in your life, how it holds you back from the joy that you know that you truly are. And so we make a decision. We choose this day to relieve ourselves of these burdens and we just take them off our backs and we place them in the canoe. Spirit knows what you need to let go of. So just use the power of your imagination and actually see these things coming off of you going into this canoe and now I invite you to push it out into the middle of the river a canoe that's full of all your worries and concerns and issues. And now just see it. See it going down the river. And as you watch it, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller in the distance until you can't see it any longer. I'm going to invite you in a brief moment of silence to feel what that feels like in the silence. Take a deep breath in and let it go. 
really let it go. You are an amazingly powerful creative being that can choose to let go of things that no longer serve you. And so we breathe in and feel how much lighter we are because we know we're never alone. God is in the midst of all things always. God is in you as you and through you handling everything for you. And so we can just sit in peace and know the truth. And so now we go back, we pick up our blanket, we head out of the meadow, and we return now to the sanctuary, to this perfect time and space. We say thank you, indwelling spirit, for this ability to know how precious and special we are and how powerful we are to create the life of our dreams. And we say thank you, God, that this is so. And so it is, and so we allow it to be. Amen. I still see more ghosts and goblins arriving. Come on in here. So ever since last Sunday when AJ and Kara and I kind of decided, we had this conversation about we should celebrate Halloween today. And so we decided we'd be in costume. And, and I was thinking to myself, how on earth? do I get Halloween out of let go and let God? You know, I'm like, where is that going to come from? How is that going to, you know? And so all week I'm worrying about it, you know, not worrying about it, but just like, okay, spirit, I need a little help. And so Thursday when I was here, Eileen and Bob and I, Reverend Eileen and Bob and I were practicing for today, going through the service. And as luck would have it, you know you can't make this stuff up. I went to put a copy of that book that we're studying for our Adventures in Faith, that Florence Shin book. I went to put one in the Lending Library so some of you can take it home and read it. And there was this book, Light Up Your Haunted House, <laughs> by a Unity author, Sue Sicking. Whoa. And I want you to know, it is just crammed full of fun things that I'm going to share with you today. So... You know, you don't have to really worry about anything. When you're living these truth principles, things just happen to you. When you know that you are a powerful, amazing being, things just unfold for you, and it doesn't have to be hard. Life doesn't have to be hard. So we have this new theme. We actually have our theme for the whole month is let go and let God. Um, I was running out of talk titles by the time we came to this time of the fifth Sunday of the month. So what we've been doing, for those of you that are new, the whole year we've been focusing on every single aspect of our lives and how we can have spiritual practices and tools in place that help us to live our lives more fully and more easily. And so this particular month in October, we're on career and creative expression. We're looking at how we can bring more creativity into our lives. How can we use that innate creativity that's in us and our spiritual tools to let go of resistance? Let go of resistance. Because it is in this letting go that we truly can be free. And I know that we think we have to be in control of a lot of things in our life, but it's actually the letting go of the resistance that helps us to be more powerful. And so about, we have an affirmation. Let's say this together. I freely release all that is not part of my divine pattern. I affirm and accept all that is. So about 10 days ago, there was a, a daily word, you know, which is one of our Unity publications, and it had let go and let God as its 
theme for the day. And there was an affirmation, and it said, I do my best and release the rest. And I like that. That resonated with me. It's easy, isn't it? I do my best, and I release the rest. Doesn't that feel freeing? It does to me. I don't know about you, but it feels doable. It feels like it's doable. We do better when we're not holding on to things that we think should be a certain way. When we're holding on, then we're not allowing spirit to work through us and give us the divine ideas for how we maybe could work smarter and not harder, right? And so it, be, it really behooves us to not <coughs> hold on because there are always things that can unfold that will make it easier. So if you're just joining us for the first time, we are in week three of a five-week series of our Adventures in Faith, which we do every fall. And we're using Florence Shin's book, The Game of Life and How to Play It. It's a Unity Classic Prosperity book. And we're covering two chapters every week. And if you're here for the first time, we're covering the law of karma and forgiveness today. And we're covering casting the burden, how we impress our subconscious. So how many of you have ever thrown a boomerang? A few of you. So you know, when you throw it right, it comes right back to you, right? Well, Florence Shin says, this is how life works for us. Because whatever we put out there is exactly what we get back. So if you're putting out negative energy, guess what? You're going to get some lessons that you're going to be learning. If you're putting out love and harmony and all of those good positive vibes, then that is what is going to come back to you. Your thoughts, your words, and your deeds return with amazing accuracy because we are powerful beings and our desires create this sort of powerful force in us and it has to be directed in the right way or otherwise, guess what? Chaos. Chaos is what happens. So there's, a, there's some steps and the first step really is to ask in the right way. Ask for the best outcome. You need to demand only that which is yours by divine right. I've told you this before. I often end my prayers with this or something better. Because in my mind, I'm praying for something. But you know, in my small human mind, I don't necessarily know what could be the best because I can't see the bigger picture. So I like saying this or something better. That allows an expansion, doesn't it? That allows an expansion that maybe there's something that I'm not even thinking about that's better that's going to come my way. So I like that. The thing I want to impress upon you about the law of karma is that if you've been doing this work for a long time, your things, your boomerang things can come back instantaneously. Not, karma is not necessarily about lifetime after lifetime. It's always present with us, no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing. So it's not necessary that you have to wait a lifetime to reap what you sow. You reap what you sow in this lifetime, too. And if you learn control and resistance, if you learn how to release that and allow situations to unfold, let love and wisdom, then you have a peace that creates more good that's going to follow you. And isn't that what we want? Because the universe now knows what you want because you're putting that out there, right? So in Light Up Your Haunted House, Sue Sicking says, we must take a good look at ourselves. God as spirit is pressing in us. We have been locked in our cages of thought in the prison of our five senses in our little airtight consciousness of not knowing any better. We are being rudely awakened from a security in the outer world that offers no security. We can attest to that, can we not? Our security kind of went up with the wind, didn't it? We are like frightened children, she said, but all is well. It is only our mind that is at the end of its tether. 
only our mind. Our world isn't going to be liquidated. We are changing. We are changing. Our consciousness is changing. Don't you love that? It's what it feels like to me. It feels like we're on shaky ground because everything is changing all around us. And we're having to find where is our security? Where is our peace? You know, well, it starts with us. It starts with us. Florence tells a story in this chapter about karma and forgiveness. She talks about this lady who has gone to the bank, and she comes home with this cash, and she realizes that one of the $20 bills is fake. It's a counterfeit. And she starts sort of reeling, like, how could the bank give me a counterfeit bill? And she starts fretting about it and fretting about it. And then she goes to Florence Shin, and Florence tells her, she said, have you done something lately that would cause fake money to come to you? And she went, oh, my goodness. As a joke, I send a bunch of stage money to a girlfriend? Like funny money, right? Fake money as a joke. Well, get this. The subconscious doesn't have a sense of humor. It doesn't know about jokes. And so it did exactly what she did. It gave her a fake bill. So Florence Shin gave her something to say. Florence said, say this. I call on the law of forgiveness, and I neutralize this situation. And so she did that. She did that work, and then she said, the bank's not going to believe me. But when she went back to the bank, they exchanged her. They apologized. No questions asked. So this stuff really, really works. Jesus taught that there is a higher law than karma. He taught in the Gospels that the law of grace and forgiveness free us from our cause and effect lives. So I want to read you something that our co-founder, Charles Fillmore, wrote a long time ago. He says, when the error is discovered and there is a willingness to correct it, under the law of forgiveness, man erases it as a child rubs out false figures in his exercise. The moment we realize and put ourselves in harmony with the truth of our being, the law wipes out all of our transgressions. That's how easy it is because that's how powerful you are. So, you know, we interpret the Bible metaphysically. That's, that's how we do this in unity and new thought. So we're in Ephesians today, chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Isn't that how we want people to treat us? kindly, tenderheartedly, especially when we're vulnerable. When we've been through so much, we want people to be kind. Aren't we seeing kindness around us? We are seeing it. I'm seeing all kinds of examples of kindness. So we have to let go of the undesirable traits, those things that we don't want to carry around anymore, any bitterness or anger or wrath. Those things only hold us down. Every thought and emotion that is negative has an effect on our mind and also on our bodies. So how do we let go of these negative thoughts? With love and active goodness. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other. We can do this work by claiming to be it. anything that we do to claim it to be that it's God's work. We're always doing God's work because we're God and expression. We came here to do good. Each and every one of us has our own individualized expression of God purpose that we're here to do. No one else can do it but us. And so when we are focusing on the good and expecting the good and doing our prayers and meditation and working with spirit and looking for the good... That's what we draw to us, just like the boomerang. To me, this is truly the aspect of letting go and letting God. Sue Sicking says in this haunted 
light up your haunted house book, that when we let go, peace begins to take over. Peace is necessary for the full sway of power. It doesn't come by us trying to change others. It comes by giving and expecting the best always. We know that that peace starts with us. So that was chapter 5. And now we have the next chapter is chapter 6. Okay, are you ready for chapter 6? Ooh, <laughs> chapter 6 is called Cast Out Your Burdens. Cast Your Burdens. So maybe in unity and new thought, we're not casting spells here. We don't do black magic here. However, we do cast our burdens. And one of the things that I love in, in Florence Shin's book is that she tells us that when we know how these spiritual laws work and we work them, our lives become so much richer. Because guess what? Our subconscious is a power. And it, when it doesn't have direction, it carries out our orders without questioning. That's how come the lady got the fake money back. Sue says our house, which is our consciousness, is haunted because... We have let in so many phantoms, like guilt and fear. We've let those things live in our house for way too long. And fear is the worst because it's about something that hasn't even happened yet. We're worried about it, and it's in the future. So what's going to happen if we continue to worry about something? Guess what? Bam, here it comes. <laughs> That's how powerful you are. So... It's our creative imagination that allows us to do that. That's how creative we are. What we think about, we bring about. Change your thinking, change your life. Isn't that what we teach here? So Florence gives us a very simple thing to do. And I have been practicing this the whole last week since I read this chapter. And it's working for me, so I'm hoping it'll work for you. She says that we have to impress upon our subconscious the good that we want. So think of it like this. It's like saying cancel, cancel when something comes out of your mouth and you don't want that to go into the universe. You go cancel, cancel. I didn't mean that. Sorry, take it back, right? Well, this is a little bit stronger. She says, say this when there's something that you don't like that shows up in your life. She says, I cast the burden of whatever it is, fill in the blank, on Christ and I go free to have blank, whatever. So for instance, say for instance, I cast this burden of pain in my body on the Christ, and I now move freely with ease and grace. Do you see how easy? She was telling this lady to use it about lack. If you feel like there's not enough in your life, like there's not enough money, there's more month than there's money to cover things. So you cast out this feeling that you have of lack and you cast it onto the Christ and then you move into this knowing that there's plenty always because God is your source right so this is how you, it's just a way to use an affirmation so whether it's finances or health whatever it is I encourage you to use it because it's better than a magic it works. This stuff works. And you know how it works? Because you're powerful, creative beings. And when you say things, the power of your word, as a child of God, you speak it into the universe, and the universe goes, ah, okay, that's what you want. That's what you're looking for. That's what you create. So the call to action is this. If you have felt down or depressed lately, you're not by yourself. There are others. So now is the time to light up that haunted house that you've been living in because today you have the opportunity to let God's light flow in and through you. We can't let these phantoms <laughs> overwhelm us because we think they're real because they're not. Let go of what no longer serves you and let God in you 
as you and through you lead you on your way. And that's the way it truly is. Now it's time for joke enough preaching. Okay, so it's Halloween weekend, so I'm just going with a few, three little things, okay? And if you know the answer, please say. Why do skeletons have low self-esteem? They have no body to love. <laughs> why, you know why skeletons are so calm? Because nothing gets under their skin. <laughs> And the last one, save the best to last. Why did the vampire read the New York Times? Because he heard that it had a great circulation. <laughs> I know. Pretty corny, right? Pretty corny. So I'm reading, I'm closing today with the haunted house. Light up your haunted house. Here we go. You're going to like this honor. And AJ, there lives in each of us a ghost that is spirit, breath, and soul of all life. It is right now pressing hard within our mind and our heart, eager and impatient for us to awaken to the time in which we live and our part in bringing it forth. Let us learn to listen to hear and to respond because our world is waiting. Namaste. <laughs> okay, now is the time in our service where we get to give from our good. So if you're here in the sanctuary and you have your gift or if you're online, hello to all of our Zoom people that are watching today. We take our offerings and gifts and whether you're giving through paypal or breeze online we say this together anyway divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that i am all that i have all that i give and all that i receive thank you god that this is so